everyone. I am about to introduce author Orly Koenig, and we're going to be talking about her brand new book released today. Mm. <laughs> that was weird. Released today. Okay. It's called Carousel Beat, and it was so good. I am so excited to talk to her about this book, and all these beach books are starting to come out. Um, I talked to Sheila Roberts a little bit ago, and hers was a beach book, and now this one. I've got a couple of them coming up, and I am so excited about it because everybody loves good summer reads, and you will love this book. Go get it. Um, everybody, here's Orly. Hi everyone, I am so excited because today I get to speak with author Orly Koenig and we're going to be talking about her brand new book. It's getting released today and it's called Carousel Beat and she has it right there. I can't wait to see the cover because <laughs> I did not get to see the cover up close. I love that cover. Oh my gosh, Orly, this book. Is so all these beach books are just now starting to come out. And I love a good beach book. I mean, who doesn't? I, this I summer have, is perfect. I, I have this cover on my desk. I mean, it's been such a crazy winter and spring. Oh, and I've gosh. had the picture of this right above my desk for months now, just waiting for the warm weather. Every time I get depressed because of another cold spell. Okay, I'll just look at this. <laughs> I know. We're on the East Coast of the U.S., and you're down in Maryland, right? And I'm in Pennsylvania, and it has not been fun, okay? It has not been a fun spring for us. But today, it's like going to be 80. I yes. Mean, it was already 80-some here earlier this morning. We're going to hit oh. summer. It's going to go fall. I mean, it's going to go winter, summer. We're not going to get a spring, but. Well, Monday, we had winter coats on. It was so cold. We actually had coats on, and then yesterday and today, all of a sudden, it's I, I from long sleeves for whatever reason. I, I went outside out. earlier. I think I'm going to have to put on short sleeves. Yeah, we went from heat to AC yesterday. Same. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, let's talk about this book. Okay, let's talk about I was so attached to Maya. Like, I love, first of all, this story, it has everything, it has every kind of conflict. <laughs> And it has every kind, like, I felt like I, it, like, touched on so many subjects for me. And then I went to the back of the book, and you have, um, for book clubs, and I was reading through, like, book club yeah. questions, because I love doing that. And um, I was like, wow, I didn't even think about it like that. Like, there were so many things to think about with this book, and, and such a great book club book. Because the women can sit around and talk about this book for, you know, at least two hours after they're done reading it and, and discuss different issues and what they think about. And of course, like mother daughter issues are always big, but mm -hmm. I, <laughs> and I, it's really interesting because I just read a book uh, a couple of days ago with a mother and daughter that got along. And it was like, I, I almost didn't know what to do with that. I was like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was fun because it was so different because, you know, they actually were like best friends. I have two daughters and I had a mother and I'm not best friends with any of, I wasn't best friends with any of them. <laughs> My daughters, it's different. They're in their twenties, but I loved that how she approached her mom because it's, it's kind of like how I did. I had a very, um, perfectionist mom and you know, if I walk <laughs> <laughs> my mom is gone now, so I can talk about this very, and, and laugh. Okay. But, but, um, I mean, we talked all the time. We talked every single day, but let's say that I, she was, if she was saying that she was going to come visit me, she lived in Florida. I would instantly, she had to give me at least a month's notice so I could go on slim fast and lose 10 pounds before. <laughs> I got <there>. Okay. <laughs> so I was feeling Maya. Okay. <laughs> it's funny because my, in both of the, the my release books, there's that there's a difficult relationship between the main character and her parents, especially in this one, obviously the mom. And I have a very close relationship with my parents, so exactly the opposite of what my characters go through. And um, in one of the early drafts, my mom was like, "Your mom's like, I'm gonna think this is us." <laughs> no, it's not. But what you were saying with uh, preparing for your mom, my hairdresser laughs at me because every time when I go, when I have my appointments with him, he goes, so do I take it your mom's coming to visit? I always get my hair, you know, all the roots colored and I have to look, yes. <laughs> yeah, my mom could just like, she could assess me up and down in like a split second. I mean, like just literally, like, you know, and I could feel it. Like I'd go to hug her at the airport or something and she'd kind of bat and I'd be like, go ahead, just go, you know. <laughs> take, take a moment. Yeah, <laughs> Let's take a moment. I'm 
Yeah, it's like my own mom. <laughs> yeah, and that's what, you know, because you can have mom and daughter, you know, I've read lots of books on mom and daughter conflicts, but what I loved about her mom was that perfectionist thing, which I have really tried, I have tried my best, and my daughter is going to be watching this, and I'm telling you, honey, I have tried. <laughs> want to be that mom like I really I try not to comment on anything I, I try to stay as far away from a comment as possible <laughs> because you know what if them so I have two daughters right and they're best friends right sort of you know they're best friend sisters and my one daughter said to my other daughter like something about like that outfit is so ugly you should change and, and she was like oh, okay and I'm like if I would have said that oh my god it have been like, mom said, and, you know, so there is, there's that thing, and she's got it, and I loved her, I loved her whole entire story. I, I hope you do, like, I want to, I want a sequel. I know that's <laughs> probably not going to happen, but I'm going to ask for one anyway, because. Yeah, I've had a couple of people who've asked, asked me about, about sequels, both for this one and the characters in the, uh, the previous book as well. Well, because even though it's a beach book, and beach books have, like, um, a stigma attached to them where, you know, it's like oh, it's all nice and wrapped up, and at the end, it's all nice and wrapped up. And, and, and this one it's, isn't. It's, it isn't. <laughs> and I don't want to give spoilers, because we don't talk any spoilers, but there is more to this woman to be said, because she's not. it's not a nice, neat little package. And I was shocked. I really was. And then I was kind of like, oh, that was so brilliant of her to not <laughs> give me that, you know? It's like we kind of want that, but then to not get it is also kind of cool, you know? What? As a writer and as a reader, I don't like neat pack. I don't like when I get to a book, to the very end of a book, and all of a sudden there's this ending that's all pretty wrapped up in a nice little bow, but it feels like it was forced. Yeah. And and I there are very few books that I read and I get to the end and it's this great little happy ending that ties everything together <laughs> that I actually feel satisfied about. Right. Because so many, I feel like, Things continue, and there's always at least one thread that l gets lost in that bow, and yeah. that's the one that bugs me. Yeah, and so that's what I'm saying. Like, this is not one of those – to me, it's not one of those beach reads that you get to the end, and then you pick up a next one, and you're – you know, like, I, I kind of sat with her for a while, you know, and I, I like, contemplated her life for a while, you know? <laughs> And it was funny, an early reader uh, kind of took me to task a little bit on that. She's like, I finished it and I couldn't fall asleep because I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, sorry, not sorry. I yeah, don't right. That's a sorry, not sorry. You're like, sorry you didn't sleep, but you, I kind of did my job. So, you know, yeah. and that's exactly what I thought when I got to the end. I was like, she is brilliant because we think we want that. We do. As a reader, we think that we want to get to the end of a book and that it's just, but like you said, sometimes it's a little forced. Sometimes they don't hit it until the last chapter and then you're like, wow, that was quick. Everything was like in a, mo yeah. like in a movie, uh, you know, the last five minutes and you're like, whoa, how did that, you know, get to yep. there? So, where did that come from? Yes. Yeah, where did that come from? And the, this is not like that. But, okay, so we had the mother-daughter. Now let's talk about, like, the exes. Because uh, what yes. I love the most. Don't we all have at least one that I we kind know. of. And I loved her conflict with her ex because she was so conflicted. And, you know, um, just for everybody out there, a little bit of context. Mine is going through a tough time. OK, this isn't just somebody who's like having fun in her life at the moment. She's not. And, you know, there were at times that I was really mad at Vale. Like and, I, and I'm sure you wanted me to be, you mm -hmm. know, I feel like you wanted me to not like him so much you know not that I didn't have some sympathy for him but Vale was her husband they just lost now what I don't think this is a giveaway because we know that she lost a child during a pregnancy but I feel like it was later term pregnancy it was later term pregnancy okay. um so I, I guess, guess a little bit better without spoilers right on the on the same day um Maya's grandmother dies and that and later that same day, she loses the baby. She has an accident and, and loses the baby. Right. And believes that it's in her in her heart, she believes that she's responsible for both of those. Right. And that's where the grief comes from. And that's where her that's that takes an entire year of her life, basically, where she just shuts herself up with her grief and tries to get and doesn't know how to get through that. 
Right. And that's why I had so much sympathy for her because, and I felt like, I do think that men and women go through it differently. And I thought you covered that really, really well, because of course he's going to go through his grief and it's not going to be the same as her grief. And, you know, um, I just, my daughter-in-law just had a miscarriage. She's got three little girls and she just had a miscarriage. And so I've seen it up close, like how my son hand, you know, because I'm the mom of the son. And, you know, so I, I can at least tell him that, like, you know, be kind, you know, I know mm-hmm. she, I know you have three children, be kind, be, you know, but men don't instinctively know what to do with it because they're yeah. going through their own thing. So it's not like I didn't have sympathy for him, but sometimes he could be, he could have been nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, with Vale, he was one of those characters that on the one hand, you want to get angry at him, mm-hmm. but you also want to, but you also have sympathy for him because here, it's been a year, and he's been reaching out to his wife, who has shut herself away from him. Right. And he doesn't know how to reach her at some point either. Right. You know, when you re- when you keep reaching out to somebody you love, and they keep pulling away from you, at some point you sort of go, I don't know what else to do. Right. And and I love how we got you got us inside of her head in that she wasn't she really didn't want to pull away. She just didn't know what to do. You know, it was like, she still loved him. It wasn't like that. It's like, she just, you know. She wanted to be with him, but she didn't know how to be with him. Right. She didn't know how to be with anybody. Right. Because she was so wrapped up in her own, her own grief yeah. and her own guilt. Right. And that really takes a lot out of you. Yeah. And I love the grandmother story of hers because I was really close to one of my grandmothers. I grew up with one of my grandmothers and, you know, so I really related to her grief going through that too, because I think a lot of time we don't understand, you know, we can go through grief of our parents and everybody gets that. But when it's grandparent, everybody's like, Oh, they're older, you know, they've lived, you know, so many years. And, and, you know, I don't think that everybody is as, you know, if they didn't have a close relationship with a grandparent, if it was somebody that was far away, they don't understand that it can be just as close as a parent, which her grandmother was just as close as, if not closer. Closer, actually. Yeah. 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 If closer than her mom. So, yeah. you know, I, I really, I think that's why I like really attached myself to her. But anyway, back to the, <laughs> the grandmother was, this book is actually um, based in a large part on my grandmother. And she was really sort of the inspiration for the grandmother and in the same way for Hank. So she's kind of played in both of those characters. Yeah. And, and I, okay. So, you know, then we have the exes and then we have the family secrets and Mm -hmm. I know, okay. Like I know my grandmother had secrets and I used to call her on them a couple of times if I knew, but man, she was like tight lipped. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) They were going with her. This grandmother was not tight lipped. (laughs) Right. This grandmother. (laughs) She was on the one. What did so, she say? So, right. yeah, she yeah. kind of did both. But I think about, like, you know, it makes you think about yourself. Like, mm-hmm. how much are you really going to tell, you know, I, about even my own children? Like, how much? You know, my mom's, I, I think my mom even had some. And so it makes you think about, we all like, do. yeah. And it's like, I, I thought she owed me them. And she did, too, you know, like, she was like, how dare, like, I can't believe she didn't tell me. <laughs> Until you're in those shoes, and then you're like, yeah, not so much. I don't think I want to tell people everything, you know? Well, and I think that's also part of what intrigues me with these stories, and women's fiction in in particular, the the genre itself, is that we all have secrets. Right. There are, you know, every single one of us has something that we're not comfortable telling others about. Right. And whether we're keeping it because we feel like we're trying to protect somebody we love, and it turns out and backfires on us, or yeah. we're trying to protect ourselves in some way. We all have them. Right. We kind and, of want to protect the image of ourselves. Like, yeah. you know, because you feel like if you tell your children some things, like they're just going to look at you differently or, yeah, but until they experience some things, I guess. But. And it's like what Maya goes through and when you find out a secret that affects somebody else, you're responsible for that secret at that point. And how do you decide whether to let it out? Right. And, or whether to keep it because there's a reason it was a secret in the first place? Yeah. And what can you do to somebody else? And I think those are, that, all, that the whole secret thing always intrigues me. Yeah, I love that. I want to tell, okay, so I want to tell everybody the first line. I wrote it down. 
because <laughs> I love first lines. I love quotes, but I really look for good first lines because, and you know, I think, I think I could really tell because you, you were talking before about how you're in charge. You were actually the founding person of that group of the women's fiction. There were five of us who are founding, there's you know, five of us who are founding members of the Women's Fiction Writers Association, and I was the founding president. I can I can always tell you guys that are in, like that you study writing because you know that you have to hook us, okay? And <laughs> you know, so I always look for a great first line. So I'm going to tell everybody. I, I wrote it down. Everyone has secrets. Some are selfish, some necessary, but all have the potential to shred lives. And I love. I was like, Ooh, they do have the potential to shred lives. <laughs> I love how you worded that. Because that was just perfect. You know, we think they're just ours, but they affect other people. And you know, and, and they're then- not ours because, because if it's it's a secret because it affects multiple people. I mean, it's, right. it's the reason it's a secret to begin with, and yeah, it can cause damage. Right. Well, I like I said before, I just want to tell you how awesome. Like getting into her head the way you did, I just felt so connected. Sometimes I read books and I don't feel like I'm waiting to feel that connection. And with her, it was like immediate. Okay. I I don't. I you know, it's like you took me into her head, and then all of a sudden I started experiencing what she was experiencing, whether I did it or not. You know, it didn't matter. And that's what's great about women's fiction too, because even if you didn't experience, you have us so into it. Like we're like, maybe I did, maybe I did experience, <laughs> or at least something close. You know, we start to look at our lives a little bit differently. You know. Well, I think because we all have whether it's the the a similar experience or I. Mean, we don't all have exact, we don't live the same life. Right, right. We're not going to have, you know, I never had a miscarriage. Right. But Me I've either. experienced other loss. Right. And the anxiety of having a child. Right. And the fears, I mean, my entire pregnancy, I was neurotic. I was neurotic. I was constantly worried about what was going to go wrong. And I was not one of those glowing, happy pregnant women. Um. But so there's there are things that we in our own lives we can sort of um, relate relate to the other to whatever character we're reading and sometimes it's something that the character the way a character reacts to something that just triggers a, 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 an emotion in us whether it's related exactly to the same situation or not right and we all of a sudden somebody does something and you think oh wait a minute what would I have done. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I love the questions at the end of the book because they really make you think, you know, and for book clubs, I think it's so perfect. And I don't know. I just, re- I really, really enjoyed this book. And I want to tell everybody, okay, so this is your second novel. How did this feel? As opposed, you re- had one last May and yes. it was called The Distance Home. And now, so you're in your second book, second year. Um mm-hmm. I don't know what what is that like for you because this is getting such great reviews already. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, interestingly enough, this book was written before my debut. Oh, okay. So this one, I, I have two other finished manuscripts that are will probably never see the light of day. They're you know they're my my learner ones. Right. Wrote them, love them, great topics, but yeah. Um, and I wrote what is now Carousel Beach and queried it. It didn't, it got great feedback, but it never, it just never quite was there. Mm -hmm. And then I put it aside, wrote The Distance Home. It got my agent pretty quickly, actually, and then sold really quickly, um, which was amazing considering how long I'd been at it. What is now this book, I've actually been working on since 2012. Wow. So, So, yeah, so that's uh, really personal for you. (laughs) So it's been, and I ended up, re, once my editor acquired it, I actually rewrote about two-thirds of the book. So it's not the same book that it was back then. Um, but it's, it's, it was an interesting process, and I'm actually more nervous about this one than I am, than I was my debut. Oh, because I think it's more personal because you were so invested in it, writing yeah. it for so It's also a much more personal book to me. The Distance Home, which was my debut, had a lot of me in it only because it has to do with horses and therapeutic riding and um, being true to yourself Mm -hmm. and being able to let go of the past in order to really appreciate and and move forward with who you should be, Mm -hmm. not being what what you think other people expect of you. 
Carousel Beach was one of those that it was just that sort of, you know, you always hear authors talking about the book of their heart. Yeah. And I always kind of went, but this is really it for me. This book is very, very special to me um, for a lot of reasons. I, I felt like I could tell, you know, like when I can feel it. It's like I then I can feel like it works that way for you. And and just so everybody knows, like carousels, we you know, I grew up in Allentown. That's where I am right now. And we have a park called Dorney Park. And they one of the first things they ever had was a carousel. Mm-hmm. It's in the middle of the park. I don't even know where it is because I haven't been there in a long time. But as a child, um, it was a free park. And so I remember every, I knew every horse, every like seat, yeah. every, so <laughs> I thought it was so cool because I'd kind of forgotten about it, you know, it was like some, so as I'm reading the book and she's restoring, which is everybody can see on the cover, she's restoring a carousel and, you know, mm-hmm. you don't really hear about them anymore. Like, you know, I it's don't know. It's a forgotten thing, right? Yeah. But it was so much fun and it played me, you know, this really like happy music and I don't know it just took me back and I was like oh I hope it does that for I hope everybody had a carousel that they can remember you know it's interesting because this book was actually there's I loved carousel growing up I always did right and but but like you you get to a certain point in your life you just don't forget about them right and then when my son was little there's a park not far from here that in Glen Echo, Maryland, mm-hmm. that had a historic carousel. And for years it was closed. They were restoring it. And when my son was little, we started going to the park because they also do a show. They have a children's theater there and a lot of really neat things. So we started going. And he, of course, wanted to ride the carousel. And one of the days when we're, we're standing in line waiting and they had these plaques around the outside describing the, the renovation of it. And I'm standing there, and we're inching through the line, and I started reading my plaques. And I looked up, and this horse, as it's going by, just yeah, spoke to me. And it was one of those things where we kept going back for him, but also for me. And the story just came came to me that way. And that was, that was the inspiration for the carousel. And as we're... The more I thought about it, the more I started thinking about the history of these carousels and what it could be. And the, the carvers, yeah. because these were original carvers. These are wood, the old wood carousels yep. that were, each one was handmade. I, and, and they are so ornate, you know, yeah. like when she talks about it in the book. And I was thinking back to that when I was like, there are th- you know, because you're a kid, you're not looking at And I was like, they really were. Like, that's the beauty of them is that they're so or And every one of them is so different. And, right. you know, yeah. so I, I love that part of the book, too. I mean, yeah. it's and just, I had a lot of fun with it because, of course, you know, I knew a little bit about it. But I have and I went into college as an art history major and I didn't last. I think within the first semester, I probably switched out to something else like most people who go into college. <laughs> But um, it's art has always been a love, and I at one point in art um, restoration work was something that I w- thought it would be fun to do. Oh, yeah. So for me, it was a lot of fun because yeah. I got to live my character through mine. <laughs> yeah, and you get to weave in the art of it, which you know, mm-hmm. every one of us has an art of some form that that we can get really into. And so I loved you know getting into her. And her passion for it and everything. So it was really cool. And I love researching more about the carousels. It's yeah. fascinating. I know. I looked up mine. I mean, I, I just went on Wiki to look up the one that I was like, <laughs> And that's what everybody can do if you have one that you knew of. Because, you know, the, the history of it. I was like, it had a history. Which was oh, great. Yeah. You know? So they really do. But anyway, I want to tell everybody about your website. Because I think it's so cool that um, you write on your blog. And you keep it up. Which Everybody doesn't seem to do because sometimes I go on websites. I did and it's for like a long time. I just researched. Oh, okay, because I'll go when it's like 2012, and I'm like, okay, they just gave up on it. But I like that you you all right. So you restarted up on your blog, and I love it. And it's not. It doesn't have to be long. It just can be like a couple paragraphs, and and yeah. you know it keeps everybody up to date. And I always check, so you know I checked, and and I was like, oh my gosh, she just updated it yesterday. So yeah. I want to tell everybody like go on your website. It's a great website, and um and then. You, they can read more stuff about your, you know, about what's going on for you. And um, before we go, tell me, like, do you have anything coming up? Are you work? What are you working on right now? 
I'm working on a couple of different things, actually. I have um, three projects that are in the works and trying to figure out which one's going to go move forward. Um, and just the next one. Hopefully, that, well, I have, there's, there's a couple that are kind of moving along a little bit, bit more, um, none that are under contract right now. But we're, as I'm playing around with both, and one is a little bit different. Um, we'll see. I'm, I haven't, I haven't quite gotten far enough into them to really talk more. Okay. There is one that has. Um, it was funny. One of the a reader recently commented about the animals, and because each of my books has an animal connection to it, and I started thinking because even the one that I thought was significantly different from these. Turns out it has an animal in it, so I guess that's <laughs> there. I just have a thing with animals <laughs> and some coffee. Well, you know where to find me when you get it done because I want to read it early again and we can talk about it. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. I, I loved it. I so love this book. Show everybody one more time the cover. It is coming out. You will. I will have all the links for Orly under here, plus the link that will take you right to that book on Amazon. And all you got to do is Thank hit. You. It's a one it's a one click on Amazon and you got the book so <laughs> so easy. But anyway, happy release day. I hope you have a great fun day and you know cuz you don't get very many of them so they're fun, right? Well, hopefully there will be more. Not for this book, but hopefully there will be plenty more future, for other ones. But you got to celebrate the ones that are happening. So I hope you have a great day and thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. Okay, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. If you made it this far, you watched Orly and I talk, and I love this book so much, and I'm sure I told her enough times how much I loved it. Um, it is a great beach read, and if you love a beach book, go get this book. You will be so happy you did. Promise. I promise you. Um, like I said, I have all her links listed underneath here, and um, today's release day, and you can hit the book, and you can get it today. And um, I just want to thank Orly, and thank you all for watching.